Suzanne Okwe, a citizen of Benue State who claims to have been forcefully detained in an isolation for 43 days, is crying out for help. Suzanne, whose incident was classified as a first index case of COVID-19 in Benue State, alleged she was traumatized and dehumanized while attempting to get a test result. A story. My name is Suzanne Idoko Okweni Lawani, coming to you live from my forceful detention center, 43 days in forceful detention. Yes, I'm the lady that was uh, accused of uh, COVID, first COVID index case in Benue State by the Benue State government. Yeah, uh, my story is that I came from England on the 22nd of uh, March for my mom's burial. And that was it. I was jet lagged, like everybody has asked, what took you to the hospital? I was jet lagged. Went to the hospital to have myself checked. The doctor said they were going to check me, which they did. He said I had a little bit of temperature. I said I had no temperature because I was only having jet lag. My body was paining me because I've traveled for almost 24, 25 hours in the past two days. Well, he said, your temperature is a bit high. I'm going to keep you here and check you. I said, no problem. I'm a law-abiding citizen. Yes, keep me. He kept me in hospital overnight, gave me some energy. The pain was gone. Ready to go home the following day. He told me that he was going to do, uh, the standard procedure was to do um, um, a swap by the Benue State government. By the way, the hospital is uh, Grace Cottage Hospital in McCurdy. Um, I said, okay, I'm okay with that. Called some two men who did a swap of my left nose and on my throat. Asked when I was going to get the result. He said in 24 hours. 24 hours passed. I didn't get a result. The next day, which was 27th of March, the doctor came to me in the evening to tell me that I was COVID positive from the result that they did, from the swap that they took. I asked, where is the result? He said he doesn't have the result that he was only told. And I'm asking, if I have COVID-19, why don't I get uh, a result of it? Well, he went away. He went away, and my friend, who was also a doctor, came to tell me that the Benue State governor, or Tom, was already doing a press conference with my name. A doctor just came to tell me, and a press conference was already going on with my name as the first in this case in Benue State. Went down to ask the doctor what all this was about. All I was told was that they were helping me to fight with the state government. On what basis? What has happened? I don't know. Where's the result? I don't have. Well, that was it. I told them if this was a drama or Nigerian Nollywood movie, I wasn't going to be part of it. Went back upstairs to get my bag to leave the hospital because I was thinking this was getting out of hand now. And this time I was okay. Nothing was wrong with me. I didn't have a headache. I only had body pain. That's what took my... And I knew it was because of the journey I did. Or the journey I made. Before going to upstairs and coming down, the hospital had been called off by armed men, ambulance with the deputy governor and his team to come and remove me to an isolation center because that was a community hospital. And I knew, well, whether it was staged or it wasn't staged, Nigerians would judge for themselves. I was taken to isolation center, dishumanized, traumatized, because already my name was in the press and gone all over. I have been videotaped recorded and sent on the internet already. Stayed at the isolation center for 10 days and then moved to Abuja. Nigerians, I am crying out because I know there are people who don't have voice to speak for themselves. I know people who, has been, who have been dehumanized, traumatized and stigmatized like the Benue State Governor has done to me. He has stigmatized me with COVID-19 already that I do not have. 
To react to this is the Chief Press Secretary to the Governor of Benue State, Tava Akase. CPS, thank you for joining us this morning. It's my pleasure to be with you. And how are you doing? I'm very well. Now, very well as, as, as a Chief Press Secretary to, 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 the gov to the government of Benue State, how do you react to the story of Mrs. Susan Idoko Beni Lawani, who was declared to be the first in this case of COVID-19 in Benue State by the state government? It's, it's really unfortunate uh, that our dear sister Susan has chosen to, to act drama uh, over an incident, over a case that should ordinarily uh, attract sympathy and uh, empathy, you know, because a patient, ordinarily a patient should uh, evoke our emotions and emotions of, of empathy, you know, but here is, it's a lady who has chosen to uh, take to the media and act scripts upon scripts of drama, you know. But uh, happily, his, uh, her family, rather, her family yesterday, uh, through uh, Barrister Lawani, uh, she is of the Lawani family, uh, a very noble family, very respected family in Beno Estate. And uh, the family came out to issue a statement that... One, she is their, their, their daughter. Two, that the federal and state governments have the right to isolate her just like any other person and treat her uh, of, of that disease. But, but to, to go back to a little to what she had said, uh, it is not true that she was kept here for 10 days. She sneaked into Makudi from Lagos and uh, knew that she was not fine, she, she was sick. And instead of presenting herself to authorities of COVID-19, she went into uh, a private uh, hospital, like she said, and uh, was, was looking for, for private, for personal treatment, instead of uh, availing herself of the, uh, the state-owned uh, facilities, like the protocols of COVID-19 have stipulated. Now, when, when, news, uh, when information got to the COVID-19 committee, um, the committee went to see her, see the, the hospital management, and explain to them that they have a suspected case here. And the, the management of the hospital willingly agreed to cooperate. And uh, the deputy governor, Engineer Benson Abonu, who is uh, the, the head of the action committee on COVID-19 in Benue State, went in person to explain to Susan that, look, this is the case you have, uh, we need to come and uh, uh, talk to you. And she was counseled, her samples were taken to Abuja. And when the result came back positive, she was the only person on that list. Remember that NCDC does not give people, they, they don't print results and give to people who, whether you are negative or positive. So she, her case couldn't have been different. And again, that result was not carried out by Benue state government. We don't have a testing center in Makudi, just like some states also do not have. Here, our proximity is Abuja, and so tests are done in Abuja, and results are sent on a, on a sheet, printed on, on, on a sheet, uh, and the names are there indicated whether negative or positive. So she was told that, they, like she said, her doctor in that private hospital told her, and this is a standard practice everywhere. When you have a case, the doctors will test you, and they will come and talk to you that, look, this is your problem, but we have to treat you. That's the same thing that was done. And what? when she was what? told that she's positive, the deputy governor led a, a, a delegation of the COVID-19 team to counsel her and tell her why she would be moved to the, the university teaching hospital owned by Benue State Government in Makudi. And that was what was done. The allegation that uh, the, the hospital, the cottage hospital where she was, was cordoned off by military men is also false. And, and we, we, it, this is it's unfortunate that she she is whipping up all these sentiments. Why why would she do this? Mr. Mr. Tever, no, so, so, Mr. Tever, let me let me interject here. Yes. Let, let me let me let, let's let's consider some of the things she did say. Now you said she checked into a private hospital after coming in for Lagos, but she said without, she came in. Without, she said she came in from the UK. To authorities here. She said she came in from the UK. Yes, through for, Lagos. For a burial, she that she came in from the UK for a burial. And 
There, there seem to be there, there are discrepancies in dates when the press release was done by the Benue State government and when she claimed she came into the country and when she was, well, like in her own words, she was forcefully detained. Can, can you throw light on this? Because she said she came into the country on the 18th of March. And the report... I, 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 I don't have evidence of when she came in because, as I said, she's... That can be ascertained. In. But immigration can ascertain that for us, can they now? Yes, exactly. Yes. So I don't have those details there of when she came in. The, 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 when the, you know, the day Governor Otto made that announcement, she was, the result came the previous day. The day the governor well, she claimed, that she claimed hardly, hardly a doctor told her about her, her being positive with COVID-19. Also did mention to her that there was already a press conference going on. Is that true? No, that is not true. The doctor told, she also said that her doctor told her that she was positive. And yes. then after that, the deputy governor came. So it was after the deputy governor came and talked to her, told her the reason why she had to be moved to the teaching hospital, which is a treatment center for COVID-19 in Benue. It was long after that that the governor addressed the press. So it was, it was not true. It is not true that while the doctor, her doctor was t t revealing the result to her, the press conference was going on. That is absolutely false. And, and uh, it's unfortunate that she has decided to, to, to be saying this repeatedly. All right, Mr. Uh, Tever. Know, now, let, let me, let, again, let's agree. She, let's agree with the fact. Discrepancies. Yes. Let's yes. agree with the fact now that the, a test result came out positive. So she, she is a COVID-19 positive um, case. Now, the, the, standard, the standard practice by WHO, which is if you suspect someone has COVID-19 or someone has been confirmed to have COVID-19, um, they, they are quarantined for days and series of tests are done until they're proven negative. Now, she's claiming that about three tests have been done on her and she's, she, she doesn't, she doesn't, there's no, she's not showing any symptoms. She, she's not, her health condition is not deteriorating. Why is she still being held against a will? Well, you see, this question would be better answered by the Federal Minister of Health and NCDC. Because the, the lady stayed in Benue State under the custody, in custody of the Benue State government for just four nights. And she was moved to Abuja to the National Hospital on the request of the, the Minister of Health. So from that point going, going, coming forward, uh, the, the federal government, the Minister of Health and NCDC are the ones to, 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 to say it. But also, don't forget that COVID-19, does it, it's not a death sentence. Yes. People have been treated and have recovered. The fact that you are positive today doesn't mean that you will not be negative tomorrow. And that is why if she was tested positive the other time, and remember that the Minister of Health said she was tested two times and the two times she was positive. So if she's tested today and she's negative, why would I be surprised? It's, it's normal. Like people have been recovering Nigeria has, I think, almost 500 people who have recovered from COVID-19. Who uh, were tested Mr. Te positive, Mr. Teven. but today have recovered or something. Yeah, Mr. Tevin, now, now I believe, I believe you're, well, well, you're well traveled. Now, if she said she, she, she claimed in a report, in a video, that she, she's been traveling for like two days, and one of the rule of thumb for jet lag recovery is that it takes about one or two days for, for people to recover, depending on what time zone you're, you're traveling to. Now, the farthest, which can be actually from, say, California to Madagascar trip, you could expect to recover in 12 to 14 days. And there are standard jet lag symptoms, which is general body fatigue. And sometimes flu-like symptoms also could actually be some of the jet lag um, symptoms you could be facing um, for those who really travel every now and then. Now, I'm concerned about the fact that she's now saying she's been held against a witch, that she, she's been detained you know, uh, um, uh, against a, a wish. Now, what is the current situation now with her? Because she says she's been there now for 43 days. That is a long time to, to say if someone is actually, um, actually that positive that or negative, said, Mr. Tebe. I, I, you know, I have answered this question, that she is no longer in our custody in Benue State. She's in, she's in Abuja, The federal she government, through yeah. the Minister of Health and NCDC, are the ones taking charge of her since she left Benue after four nights that the government took charge. Now, I will not be able to know her, her current status. 
and why she's still in the custody of, NC, of, of NCDC. They, they are the people to answer. But we know that NCDC told us that she was positive two times, and the federal, I mean, the Minister of Health confirms this. But again, don't forget that in her earlier videos, she confirmed that she came in and she wasn't feeling fine. She had fever. She was tooling and stuff like that. So if, so, is, if it's only jet lag, why would someone be tooling? Why would someone have fever? These are yeah. questions yeah, that, are yeah, that, 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 that exist in the earlier video, videos she made and the current one she just released. Yeah, I mean, some, some people react differently to jet lag. Like, stooling can actually be part of it. I mean, if you, if you, if you consider really, I mean, um, jet lag symptoms. But at the end of the day, I, I'm concerned about uh, our mental state of being. And, like, you can't, okay, wait, wait, you can't wait, readily wait, tell us right now. Let me, let me interrupt you a bit. Yes. On what you just said. Uh, remember that she said her doctor confirmed, told her that she, she, that she was positive of, of COVID-19. Yes. This is the same doctor she trusted and went into his hospital willingly. It was not the Benue State government that, that asked her to go to that hospital. So if the doctor, her private doctor, who began to treat her of jet lag or whatever it was, later told her that, look, madam, you have COVID-19. Was it Governor Otom at that point that said that? All right, Mr. Mr. Tevin, finally, because I need to let you go this morning. Now, she, she's an indigene of Benue State. What is the update on her currently? I, I, I wouldn't know. The update on her is that Barrister Lawani, who spoke on behalf of the Lawani family, which I have already said is a very noble family, a respected family in Benue State, has given us an update on her. That is what we believe, because she is no longer in the custody of Benue State government. I want the Chief Press Secretary to the government of Benue State, Mr. Teva Akase. Thank you very much for joining us on the news and for your contribution. It's my pleasure, always.